Hi, my name is Courtney. I'm here with the City of New West Fitness team and today we're going to go through a short beginner's yoga workout together. If you need breaks along the way, take them and just enjoy. Before beginning, please fill out the provided PARQ form, which ensures that you're ready to exercise. We ask that you do that at least once a year. And as always, exercise at your own pace. Modify the moves whenever needed and take breaks. Drink lots of water, stay safe, and have fun. We're gonna start by standing at the edge of your mat, nice and tall. We'll start with a mountain pose, which is one of the hardest poses in my opinion, because you're standing up nice and tall. From here, you're going to spread your toes, pick them up, spread them out as you set them back down. That's your base. Our toes are so important. Relax your shoulder blades down on your back. Palms are facing forward to help open up those tight shoulder and chest muscles. And your head is drawn back ever so slightly so that you are about an inch taller than normal. From here, let's just take some deep breaths. Breathing in. And out. As you breathe in and out, notice how your feet feel connected to your mat and work your way up. Notice how your knees feel, how your hips feel, how your lower back feels. Moving up to your mid back, upper shoulders, all the way up through the crown of your head. And from here, we're going to add a little bit of movement to our breath. On your inhale, bring your arms up and out, all the way up, and you're exhaling those arms back down. Go at your own pace with these. You're inhaling, spreading those fingers out, and you're exhaling all the way down. And it's so much fun, we're doing it four more times. Inhale up. Exhale down. Three more. Inhale. Exhale, two more. And we're coming up to that last one. Make it a big breath in and a big breath out. Good, nicely done. From your mountain pose, bring your feet just a little closer together. We're going to get right into chair pose because that's going to get us warmed up. From your chair pose, arms are extended and you're sitting back and down. You can see your toes. Imagine you're going to sit back in a little chair, an imaginary stool that's behind you. Your knees are pointed in the same direction as your second toe. So you've got some space in between your knees. Your shoulder blades are drawn back and down. And because you're awesome, you're gonna sit just a little bit lower. Take one big breath. Good, slowly push up. Keep those arms nice and long. Push up onto your toes. You can choose to stay here and work on your balance. It's a little windy in here, so I'm a little wiggly. I might stay here. If you want a little more, you're just going to bend your knees, keeping your heels lifted. And it's like your back is sliding down a wall. I'm going to go to about there. If you're used to going a little lower, go ahead and get lower. Keep your heels lifted. Keep your shoulder blades drawn back. Take a big breath. And exhale. Good. Push the floor away from you. Instantly warmer. I'm going to turn this way so you can see what's going on. Bring your feet a little closer together. Your big toes touch. Your heels are slightly apart. Bring your arms up overhead. Interlace your fingers. Point your pointer finger and thumbs towards the ceiling. Draw your arms back and down. Take a big inhale. Take your arms over to the right. Good. Pushing the floor equally through both feet. Keeping length through both sides of your waist. It's like you're making a rainbow. One more big breath. Good. Use your side abs to draw you back up. Let's switch our grip. Bend at the knees. Bend at the elbows. Switch the grip of your fingers. It'll feel like you have an extra finger. Push the floor away from you. Draw your shoulder blades back and down and other side. Good, nice and gentle, just like that rainbow. Equal pressure through both feet. Take a big breath. Good, and back to center. Relax your arms down. 
Step to the front of your mat. Feet are hip width distance apart. Hands at your hips and forward fold. Bend your knees as much as you need to if you're part of the tight hamstring club, which I am. I'm gonna bend my knees a whole bunch, you can too. Hands can be flat on the floor to start. And from here, relax your torso, relax your neck, relax your head. You might even let your arms hang out. You might grip opposite elbows. You might sway a little bit. We're just opening up the lower back and the tight hamstrings that you might also live with. If you want to extend a little bit through those hamstrings, you're lengthening by lifting your hips just a little and allowing your torso to relax even more. Now we're gonna make it a little more fun. Bend your knees, place your hands down on your mat and step back into plank. If full plank isn't your jam, lower those knees, you're still planking. From your knees or from your toes, you're in plank and you're taking nice deep breaths. And then from here, gently lift your hips into downward dog. Pedal your feet, so walk it out a little bit, walk the dog. You can waggle your hips from side to side. You can get a little deeper in that downward dog. When you're ready, spread your fingers out. Let's explore downward dog for a few breaths. You're pressing your heels down towards your mat. You're pressing your armpits towards the tops of your thighs. And there's a huge stretch happening in the backs of your legs, maybe through your arms. Hopefully it feels good. Take two more big breaths. All right, now that we're really warmed up, we're gonna get into some lunges. Pick your right leg up behind you and you're gonna bring it forward and set it down. It feels like it takes about 10 kilometers to get there, but you'll get there. Once that foot is down, draw those shoulder blades back, strengthen through that core, come up to that front thigh. If you feel like you're on a bit of a tight rope, you might have to walk that back foot out a little bit so that they're hip width distance apart. From here, get nice and tall through your torso, bend that back knee, bend that front knee to get a little deeper and then lengthen through that back leg. Your tailbone is pointed down towards your mat. Hands can stay at your hips. If you want a little added challenge here, you can lift those arms. You might even take your gaze up as long as that's okay with your neck. Take two big breaths. Good, nicely done. We're gonna float all the way down. We're gonna drag that foot all the way back into downward dog. We have two sides, we're gonna do the other side, otherwise we'll be walking in circles after this. Lift your left foot and bring it forward, set it down. The good thing about doing yoga at home is you could groan as much as you want. Bring those hands to your front thigh. Draw those shoulder blades back, get nice and tall through your torso, bend both knees a little bit, give yourself some space in that back leg. Then you're lengthening through that back leg, tailbone's pointed down towards your mat. Hands can stay here, hands can also come up. Now you're having fun, take two big breaths. Nicely done, hands float down. Let's meet back in downward dog. If you're finding you're getting a little fatigue, you can always lower your knees, chill out here. You can always come into child's pose as well, anytime you get tired. All right, now that you're in downward dog, let's get deeper into downward dog. Spread those fingers, make suction cups with your palms, armpits towards the tops of your thighs. Your heels might touch your mat, they might not, it doesn't matter. Nice long inhales and exhales. Good, come on down with your knees, tabletop position. From here, we're gonna do a little bit of core work. So what you're going to do is extend your right arm and extend your left leg. And we're gonna hold this and we're gonna breathe through it for a few breaths. 
So what we're looking for is your hips are parallel to the floor. So if you find that that one leg wants to pop up, just gently bring that hip down. One more big breath here. Good, let's do the other side. Bringing hand and knee down, extending your other arm and your leg, paying attention to those hips. If that one hip pops up, gently bring it down. Good, one more big breath. Good, let's do that just a little bit faster. So take an inhale first, extend your right arm, left leg on your exhale. Inhale to center. We'll do the other side with the exhale, reaching out. Inhale back to center, let's keep going. It's that much fun. Exhaling to reach. Inhaling to center. Exhaling to reach. We should do one more. Good, exhaling to reach. Inhaling to center, last one. Exhale to reach. Inhale to center, good. That was tough, let's do a little child's pose. Big toes together, knees apart to give you space and stretch back into child's pose. Now in your child's pose, breathe into those back ribs your forehead might touch your mat, it might not, it doesn't matter. But relax into child's pose because you've earned it. One more big breath. Good, it's gonna get tougher. So come on back to all fours. Let's talk about plank. Let's start with bringing knees back and lowering hips. You're in plank. Now if you find that you have stiff wrists or any soreness happening in this position, you can come down to forearm plank. It's still plank. And if you're like, Courtney, I'm kind of bored. Hey, tuck those toes and lift your knees. Not as boring. Nice big deep breaths. One more. Good, lower those knees, push back into child's pose. Nice and long through that body. Now you can experiment with child's pose. If your knees are further apart, it gives you room to really settle in to those hips. If your knees are together, it might open up your lower back a little bit more, especially if that's where you hold a lot of tension. Pick the one that works for you. Nice big inhale. And exhale. Good, coming on back to all fours. Let's talk about yoga push-ups. There's something that I find very challenging, but we're gonna break it down. We're gonna do it in steps. We'll start with plank, knees on the ground. And I'm going to have you slowly lower down by bending your elbows. The trick with these is to keep your elbows hugged in tight. Hugged in, hugged in. If you make it to the ground, you're there. Getting back up is the challenge. Hug your elbows in. Keep them hugged in as you push, 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 push. Up, up, up. Knees can be on the ground. If you'd like to try it with knees off the floor, go slow, take it easy, have fun. So even from here, you're starting to bend your elbows straight back. The more you can hug your arms in, the more power you have. All the way down. Let's get back up. Hug your elbows in nice and tight. Push, 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 push. And child's pose. Nicely done. The nice part about yoga is you really just have to breathe and you're doing yoga. One more big inhale. And exhale. Good, now that we're professionals at the yoga push-ups, we're gonna come back down using a yoga push-up or chaturanga, either knees on the floor or knees off the floor, all the way down. Good, let the tops of your feet rest on the floor. You're gonna keep your hands underneath your armpits and everything hugged in nice and tight, a little bit of baby cobra. So from here, you're just lifting your chest a little bit off the floor, hover your hands, push the tops of your feet down into your mat. We're working on our backs. So backs are integral to core. They're part of your core. Let's work on strengthening our backs. Good. Lower down. Whew. Take a couple of breaths. 
I don't know about you, but I'm a little bit sweaty just from doing this stuff. Now, we're gonna do another baby cobra. We're gonna do it even better than the first time. Hug your little grasshopper wings in tight. Hover your hands, push the tops of your feet into the floor and come up. You might even look ahead as long as that's okay with your neck. And this time we're taking three more big breaths. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. One more, inhale and exhale. Good, let's give our back a break and coming into child's pose, pushing up through chaturanga, all the way back, all the way back into child's pose. Taking some nice deep breaths here. One more. Good, push yourself up using your hands. Bring your hips to one side, swing those legs out in front. A lot of fancy words for sit on your tush. Come forward just a little bit. Sit nice and tall through your core. We'll do a little bit more core work here and then we'll get you all relaxed. Sit tall, bring your hands behind your knees, shoulder blades back, and you're just gonna lean back until you feel your core start to engage. There it is for me. You can stay here with your hands on your knees or behind your knees, or you can extend your arms. That's a little bit more work. If you want even more work, lift your feet. Keeping that nice tall spine. If you want a little bit more work, just extend your feet. That's about as far as I go, tart, tight hamstring club. Take two more big breaths. Good, set those feet down and you get to lie all the way down. Lie all the way down on your back. Now we're gonna work on glutes and hamstrings with some bridge pose. Arms are by your sides, palms facing down. Walk your feet closer to your hips. Knees are hip width distance apart. And when you're ready, you're just going to lift your hips off the floor. Good, you might even lift so high that you shift your shoulder blades a little bit underneath you. You might even grasp your hands underneath your hips. If you want to add to this, keeping your hips nice and level, you're going to lift one leg up into the air. Take two breaths. Good, let's do the other side. Lower that foot. Lift your other leg up in the air. Take two breaths. Good, lower that foot. Push through your feet to lift just a little higher. Unclasp your hands if they're underneath you. Roll those shoulders out and one vertebrae at a time. Start to roll down. All the way down. And then hug your knees in nice and tight, rock side to side. Feels pretty good to massage your back a little bit here. Whatever feels good. This feels like a good time to get in a little bit of a twist. From here, you're making your shins parallel to the ceiling, bringing your arms all the way out like the letter T. Palms are facing up. That'll help open up your shoulders and your chest. And bring those knees over to the right. If you go to the left, it doesn't matter. Your knees might touch the floor. If they don't, sometimes it's nice to have a bit of a cushion underneath them. You might even gaze in the opposite direction and I feel bad at not looking at you anymore. But this will complete the twist as long as that's okay with your neck. So from here, go back to your breath. Nice long inhales and exhales. Let's do a few more breaths. One more. Good, use those core muscles to bring your knees back up. Once you feel ready, you're gonna do the other side. So gently bring those knees over to the other side and if you need that cushioning on the other side, go ahead and 
move your cushion or your towel over. And if it's okay with your neck to complete the twist by gazing in the opposite direction, you can go ahead and do so. Notice how one side is different than the other. If we were perfectly symmetrical, I think we'd be boring. Nice long inhale. And exhale. Let's do a few more of those. Inhaling nice and deep. And exhaling. One more. Nicely done, using those core muscles to come back to center. This is one last chance to get in some nice massage in those hip and lower back muscles with some leg circles. And I don't know why, but I like to do a little bit of happy baby before I come into Shavasana. So with happy baby, you can grip the outsides of your feet. You can grip your big toes, whatever makes you happy because you're doing happy baby. From here, you're drawing your knees towards your armpits and babies usually move around a little bit. So move around, have some fun with it. You can lengthen one leg, lengthen the other, just whatever feels good. You'll probably notice a nice big stretch in your hamstrings. Again, if you're part of the tight hamstring club, rocking side to side. If you prefer a more still happy baby, just get into it and enjoy. Take three more big breaths. Perfect. Once you're done with your happy baby, you're coming into Shavasana. Maybe the second hardest pose, at least for me. I have a hard time stilling the thoughts in my mind. Now, your Shavasana can happen with knees, bent, which is really helpful if you have a stiff lower back, and you can even bring your feet apart and tense your knees together. Shavasana with your palms facing up, your arms by your sides, that will also help open up those chest muscles. And I know I pick on them, but they tend to get so tight. You can also do Shavasana with your legs down on the ground, and you can spread out whatever feels good. And with your Shavasana too, if you tend to get chilly, you can put a towel on you or a blanket. And in Shavasana, focus on your breath. And one technique I like to use is imagining my breath is like a wave. So your inhale starts from your head, travels all the way down. Once it reaches your toes, you exhale from your toes all the way up through the crown of your head. You can even imagine the sound that a wave makes. So you're inhaling as the wave comes in and travels down your body. And you're exhaling as the wave comes back up and travels out through the crown of your head. Using techniques like that can help still the mind. Nice long inhales. Make those waves come in and out very slowly. Sometimes it takes a little bit to slow down the waves. Sometimes it takes many, many breaths. I'm gonna keep you here in Shavasana. Please feel free to stay in Shavasana for as long as you're able to. And I highly encourage a lot of Shavasana in your life, even though it's the second hardest pose. It will really benefit you. And while you're in Shavasana, I'm going to take this moment to thank you for watching and please enjoy.